Hello everybody, Spider Crusher here, and this is a video about my Spider Crusher trade timer. Now the purpose of the trade timer is to alert you to market conditions that are favorable towards trading momentum stocks or uh, favorable towards trading mean reversion. So in the market, there are sometimes periods where you trend strongly and everything looks overbought, but it keeps going higher. And then there are other periods that are whipsaw, and as soon as you think you have a breakout, bam, you're getting stopped out in the other way. And you know, a lot of uh, a lot of, I guess, trading pain could be ameliorated if you had a better concept of when it was a good time to trade mean reversion, when it was a good time to trade the trend, and etc. So that's kind of that's kind of the purpose of the trade timer is it incorporates a lot of calculations into determining whether or not the market is rewarding the trending stocks or rewarding the mean reversion stocks. So it's not a look at moving averages or percent above this. It's just it's like a strict count of what is being rewarded in the market and then from that it compute a variety of statistics and you know here's the beautiful indicator you see today. So quickly running through what each pane means, this top pane is sort of uh, an initial raw measurement of the day's activity, positive or negative. Here's the S&P 500, just so we can kind of compare and see when our signals are occurring against the broad market. These two separate gold bars are indicative of like extremely positive long-term trends. So when both gold bars are there, the market is more in a long-term positive bull state, let's say. So even if you have green periods, the, both the gold um, add weight to that. Next you have a short-term breadth signal, a long-term breadth signal, and then a weekly buy score positive and negative, and a monthly buy score positive and negative. So th that's the components of my indicator. The way I determine being bullish or bearish is simply what a majority of these five panes say. So if you look at um, you know, let's look at some some past history in this indicator, and we'll go back to the you know January of last year. So we were bullish coming into the new year. You can see the price is green, things are green, and then we started getting some red creeping in, which is some selling going on right about you know right through here. We didn't actually get bearish though until we had a majority of our indicators telling us so, and that occurred right here. You can see that the price is red. This is clearly negative. This is still green, so that's bullish, but then look down here. Do you notice how the red is peeking out above the green? And actually, if you look at the raw value to the left of the blue crosshair, you can see the weekly was 396 on the sell side, and the buy side was 297. So there you go. Here's one, two, three out of five negative, so we're bearish. We're not buying new momentum long trades. We're not really looking for breakout trades. We could be looking for mean reversion short trades, but that's it. You know, the market moves lower. We don't bottom fish. We don't, you know, call the low here just to get stopped out here. We just wait for it. And then when did the market start to come back to us? Well, we started getting some green right here. But we didn't get officially bullish until right here because that was when we had, you know, three out of the five or a majority indicating green. So if you look a couple bars later, we sort of had a flip flop in that, you know, here I'm bullish on momentum, here I'm bearish on momentum. Here I'm bullish on momentum. Well, that's fine with me because I made this indicator purposefully to be extremely sensitive to these changes. Even just a small move can can trigger it. But what I do is I'm not trading, you know, S&P futures off of this S&P signal. It's just a roadmap about when should I trade. So I know what I should trade. Those are my compression breakouts. When should I trade them to get the best results? That's when this thing is telling me that the market is actively rewarding momentum stocks. So. Even though it was bullish, bearish, bullish, what this means is just don't buy any new positions. You know, if the market stops you out of your current ones, then say la vie. If it doesn't, which it doesn't look like it did because there was no pullback, then you're still in them and you can, you know, continue scouring for those nice setups. So that's kind of how I use this. If the market is looking good, I scour for good setups on my compression breakouts. If it's red, I wait. So looking at what happened on Friday, you can, or uh, Tuesday, excuse me. Tuesday, we had enough to completely flip everything red. You can see that the size of this sell-off on Tuesday was very large. If you scroll back in time and look at the sizes of the previous sell-offs, we haven't had a sell-off this strong um, since August, you know, when the world was ending, one of the many times that it apparently ends every year. <laughs> so what this means is that we're not going to be looking for momentum trades. We're not going to be looking for uh, breakout setups until we get more green in our indicator. Now, one positive thing is that I should point out before I run out of time is that if you look at how far this is extended, there is there is a possibility we get a mean reversion bounce due to how quick and sudden the sell-off was. But that's not how I bet. I wait for confirmation.